Well, we've been actually working over time. Uh, in the beginning of March or uh, in the beginning of April, actually, we started making a antibody test when the World Health Organization updated their guidelines, stating that antibody tests would be crucial in finding out the actual spread of the disease. And our infrastructure is actually made uh, over here to make antibody tests. So uh, we came up with a plan for doing it in within three weeks. Uh, wow. We sourced, yeah, we sourced all the antigens. We sourced positive control, negative controls, and also some controls to figure out cross reaction, which is very important at the moment. And we just did it. We we worked twelve hours, thirteen hours a day, no weekends, nothing. Three weeks straight, we got the manufacturing out, and the the kit is called SARSplex. It is currently the only test to the best of our knowledge that can measure three different antibody responses to multiple proteins on the uh, uh, pandemic virus. And we, we, we're quite proud that we could do this within three weeks. If you want to learn more about this specific test, you can go to tezted, that's T-E-Z-T-E-D dot com slash SARSplex, S-A-R-S-P-L-E-X. Welcome to the Phil with Forbes 30 podcast. This is Phil Michaels, Forbes 30 under 30 entrepreneur and performance coach. Every year, Forbes names the top 30 entrepreneurs, leaders, and stars in the world. And each week, I bring you one of them to help you level up in your life and business. From celebrities like LeBron James to Kylie Jenner and Cardi B, to entrepreneurs with companies like DoorDash, Instagram, and YouTube, you're sure to learn from the list. Thanks for spending time with me today. Now it's time to level up. Level up. Welcome to Phil with Forbes 30 podcast. Today we have a very special guest who grew up in Hyderabad, India, but moved to Finland to pursue a career in nanoscience with specialization in cell and molecular biology. His company, Tested, created TickPlex, the first ever multifunctional multiplex test for the clinical diagnosis of tick-borne diseases. It enables healthcare providers to test patients for multiple microbes and disease stages simultaneously, which has yet to be done before. They've raised over 1.5 million, have partnerships in Canada, Germany, Spain, Latvia, and others. The Finnish Science Foundation for Technology and Economics has awarded him the Young Research Entrepreneur of the Year Award, making him the first foreign national to ever receive the award. Please welcome Kunal Garg. Very excited to have you here. Welcome, Kunal. Thank you for having me, Phil. Very lucky to have you. It's my pleasure. Um, so tell me about the very first time you heard about making the list. Where were you? Take me back to that moment. What do you remember about making the list? So, I mean, like many of us, when you wake up, the first thing you do is look at your emails. And I was doing the same. And, and I, I got this newsletter from Forbes, wherein there was this publishing dates for different lists. And I was just going through it while brushing my teeth. And then it, it said that was the date when the Forbes 30 and the 30 for the euro was coming out. And I was like, that's today. So I just went on and the list was out. And uh, you know, you don't expect things like this to happen. So I'm just going out on it to see if my name is there. So I just put in K-U-N-A-L and then Garg comes out. I'm like, okay. So I press on it and then I'm listed there. So I didn't fin finish brushing. I've called my whole family. <laughs> I've called my friends. Uh, and, and it was really amazing to find out that something like this has happened. I, I had planned applying for Forbes in 2016. I eventually did it in 2019. So it, it was really great to see that, you know, there is some standing for such uh, technology out there and for such uh, actions out there. What a special moment. That must have been yeah. so exciting for you and your family. They must have been so proud. Yeah. Um, I know mine was and it's Forbes has done a lot for us. So listen, now that it's, it's such a crazy time with COVID, what have you been doing to get the most out of this time? What's been your go-to hack? or you and your team have been doing right now to play offense rather than defense? 
Well, we've been actually working over time. Uh, in the beginning of March or uh, in the beginning of April, actually, we started making a antibody test when the World Health Organization updated their guidelines, stating that antibody tests would be crucial in finding out the actual spread of the disease. And our infrastructure is actually made uh, over here to make antibody tests. So uh, we came up with a plan for doing it in within three weeks. Uh, wow. We sourced, yeah, we sourced all the antigens. We sourced positive control, negative controls, and also some controls to figure out cross reaction, which is very important at the moment. And we just did it. We we worked twelve hours, thirteen hours a day, no weekends, nothing. Three weeks straight, we got the manufacturing out, and the the kit is called SARSplex. It is currently the only test to the best of our knowledge that can measure three different antibody responses to multiple proteins on the uh, uh, pandemic virus. And we, we, we're quite proud that we could do this within three weeks. Wow, that is incredible. So talk about playing offense. You're not just, <laughs> you already have our lab. You're like, let's repurpose this within three yeah. weeks. Let's find a way that we could test the antibody. So you've developed the only COVID-19 antibody test, to your knowledge, that can measure three different antibodies against multiple proteins on the sars covid to virus. That's incredible. I mean, congratulations. Yeah. You, you've got to be very proud of that. And, and they can go to, if you want to learn more about this specific test, you can go to Tez Ted, that's T E Z T E D dot com slash SARS Plex, S A R S P L E X. And we'll put that in the show notes as well. So you and the audience can go check this out. That's incredible. So Thank how you. has the response been so far? Well, the test has been validated successfully and independently in two labs in Germany. Uh, and there are new validations going on as we speak in a lab in Spain and in a lab in Mexico at the moment. Wow. Uh, yeah, and we are trying to find partners in Canada and, and other countries. So it's it's been really about three to three and a half weeks that we've launched the test with CE and IBD registration. Uh, so we are still in the stage wherein we are building credibility for the test. And it looks like uh, the test is at least going to be sold in a few countries. Oh, and we finished the registration with the Indian authorities today with a local partner. So wow. the validation will start there also soon. Congratulations. That's, yeah. that's amazing. So yes. that is a true uh, depiction of and a true example of playing offense. Yes. So how did you tell me about how you originally started this? How did you get to developing TickPlex which is to diagnose the tick-borne diseases and then eventually moving to other avenues that you can serve people with out of your lab. Yeah, Take me back so, to the beginning where you grew up, the path that led you to where you are now. Right. I mean, uh, as you introduced, I, I, I am from Hyderabad. Uh, absolutely love that city. Uh, and uh, I was the first child to my parents. And in, in India, there's a funny saying that the first child is always the experimental one. So I was the experimental one in the family. Uh, but as, as a child, I basically struggled at doing everything and anything, performing at any, everything and anything. And in the academic context, it would, I would be overselling myself if I said I'm an average student or I was an average student. And, and the whole idea of that came from, you know, in India, it, it is good to know that back then or even now, the way you graded or the way you scored in exams really mattered, you know, your surroundings and how you stood up in a community of youngsters. So I had basically struggled a lot to fit into that community to score well in exams and stuff. What really changed for me was in the third year of my undergrad studies, wherein we, uh, I created a prototype with a very good friend of mine uh, for a portable water purifier that could be used in the villages uh, of India and Africa. And we took that to the deputy research director of the university back then. And he said, you know, there's nothing like this out there. Why don't you think about patenting this? So we actually uh, sat down for a week, wrote a patent claims and everything. And that process for me was very unique. I mean, from an idea to a research plan, to a prototype, to a patent, 
within a span of i think it was 3 to 4 months it really gave me a perspective of what i wanted from there on so i decided whatever i score in exams it's not going to change because it's not changed for two decades so <laughs> so so i i i really started working hard in lab uh, i i spent overtime in lab just learning basic techniques understanding the techniques what the results mean how do you say that the result has failed and how do you move forward and i think that kind of led me to finland uh and then when i came to finland i knew that the masters was only for two years so i started working from day one i joined the lab of dr leona gilbert who's actually my co-founder at the company my boss and also my phd supervisor so i'm doing a phd at the same time uh, with wow. the company yeah in the final year hopefully i can defend this year uh so we we started off with the notion that you know build something uh in the diagnostic uh industry and and leona having great contacts in the industry the first idea was to patent it and sell it off so so get uh, a patent and then sell it off that was it, the original idea that was the original idea and and so i didn't say anything at that point we we just ha- we were just having a discussion you know maybe we try opening up a company and she she had a company back in canada she was, so she is not a finnish uh, uh citizen she is a canadian uh so uh she knew what it takes to open up a company and the whole mindset of an entrepreneur and she was like you know opening up a company in this age and stuff you know maybe not so there was a competition called best of biotech in austria vienna that came up that required a five page business plan that me and leona just wrote up in a week and you have to take it take into account that these are two scientists writing things very scientifically not so business oriented <laughs> and and i said you know if let's just do this and if we even we can think about the company and whatever we want to do with the idea so the application happened in august in november we get a call you know you guys have won come to vienna wow so like okay <laughs> and and the, the, best, the best part is we got introduced to the stage as a citizen of india a citizen of canada from finland representing in 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 austria so four four nationalities in one sentence uh, and and then we came back to helsinki and while entering the bus to the city leona was like maybe the idea is not that bad let's pursue the company side and that is where it started we we applied for the business finland uh, funding we got over half a million euro to give a proof of concept and to really analyze if if starting up a company was the best idea or selling it off and we came to the conclusion that new players are needed in this industry mm. so fast forward 2016 we we registered the company we had uh, investors friends families uh, and and uh, we set up the first bio level safety to lab in central finland with an iso accreditation for manufacturing so outside the university our facility is the only facility that can actually uh, grow uh, bio level safety to bacteria and also make diagnostics for commercial use so that has been excellent and we've we've able to create a team that actually believes in the product we have partners that have started pushing the uh test kit and places that we didn't even think about so it's it's been going great but how Now, did you get them to believe in you i mean that's you got a half a million euros and you're just two scientists who just happen to write up a five page business plan in a week yeah i mean how did you convince them that hey we are the right team for the job yeah i mean as scientists i think what we do best is stay credible uh so when we talked to one of the biggest companies like quest diagnostics for partnership back in the day they said you know publish the article get your patents filed if you are able to do that oh and and get your quality management system up and running if you are able to do that maybe we can talk and we did and so we went back to them but then the pandemic hit so so the talks are on on hold right now but uh many of the big players wanted us to do that to really see if we were able to create a team if we were able to make a ceivd product 
if we were able to commercialize it in different countries and we have been able to do that so since 2019 summer till now we've been talking to investors we've been talking to new partners all over the globe to get this up and running because now they see a track record which is that we are not just scientists we have actually created a product we've launched mm. it we've generated revenue you're not uh, just scientists you're actual entrepreneurs and business people now yeah so and i think this is a great that. example for the, for the audience too if academia isn't always the right path for you i mean you started in academia mm-hmm. you're like i'm an average student but you found something that you were passionate about with the water water purification yeah. that led you down the entrepreneurial route like hey i actually yeah. enjoy building a team building yeah. a product or service that we can help others with and then that eventually you uh, built another team for the lab and you learn how to turn it into a product that can generate revenue how did you i mean this is great a great example of entrepreneurship and Thanks. and how much you can learn yeah. from being an entrepreneur versus just sitting in a classroom in a, in traditional academia <laughs> or yeah. or do both concurrently so you're getting to apply exactly what you learn in academia yeah. to to the work that you're doing in real life how did you decide on which product to start with like how did you decide on tick born illnesses right so i mean the research behind tick born diseases actually comes from a total of 20 years of research from Leona's group she actually handled multiple projects from the EU called the FP7 projects that that amounted for millions and millions of euros and and uh, they had a consortium of multiple countries multiple companies within Europe and that research was 20 years and then the whole point of that research that was done prior to me joining Leona's group was to create a multiplex test for just Lyme disease so lyme disease was the only focus however when i joined leona's group her focus kind of changed to maybe doing two or three bacteria or viruses more however uh, i tried to add even more uh, bacteria and viruses and then we really mm-hmm. saw that it was not just a play of five or six different bacteria viruses it is actually 20 25 even more that are included in the disease so that research was actually my master's thesis uh when we realized that there's actually a proof of concept and proof of business over here we had so to change my master's thesis yeah it wasn't that you were just uniquely interested in tick-borne diseases it's that you happen to come across a lot of data that you already had so you, it it made sense for you both to work on this and then you became interested and passionate about it as you started yeah. to develop a competency around it yeah that, i think this is always interesting is instead of trying to find your passion and follow your passion it's like find your purpose what are yeah. you good at and what are you passionate about and you find the intersection of both which ends up becoming your purpose and for you it sounds like you started to develop a competency hey i have a lot of information and acumen around yeah. tick-borne illnesses and i can use that to help other people and that eventually became your passion because you were good at it yeah sort of <laughs> now let you summarize it that way <laughs> Yeah I mean that that has been basically the idea that you know having the practical knowledge practical know how goes a long way it it really does theory is one thing it it's good to know what may happen but what actually happens is mm. is really the the practical aspect what happens in the textbook or in the lab isn't always what happens in reality uh, yeah I mean and so you so your work you find out there's about 20 or 25 different bacteria or viruses involved and then where did you go from there I mean the the idea from there was to commercialize a test kit that first looks for multiple infectious diseases uh, uh, uh and multiple disease stages at the same time and we came up with three different products Tickplex basic was only for Lyme disease Tickplex plus was for Lyme disease and a few other microbes and then tickplex premium which is not come out yet uh we still waiting on a few things from a regulatory standpoint w- was the massive outlook on tick borne disease microbes basically uh but where we are going with this is is autoimmunity really it's not just infectious diseases and multiple microbes uh, uh the whole notion that one bacteria or one virus is responsible for one disease is is really a myth right now and we are trying to change that by looking for a 
or screening for multiple parameters at the same time. So that's kind of what TESTED stands for, multiplex multifunctional uh, aspects for doctors and patients. Because at the end, the test becomes more uh, cost effective. Uh, patients don't have to wait for a longer time because one test for one parameter takes about one week. So now times that 25, you know, you, you're so already- So your common, the common myth for this industry is that you, most illnesses occur from one bacteria or vi one virus. And you're yeah. saying it's actually a multitude and combination of multiple viruses, multiple bacterium, and you're able to test for all of them instead of just one or two. Yeah, multiple bacteria, especially in the context of infectious diseases. And for tick-borne diseases, yes, we are able to test for multiple uh, bacteria, viruses, and multiple disease stages at the same time. So, I mean, that has been the the know-how that we've created for the past four years in the company and and for your question as to how we stumbled upon sars flex was that most companies have seen a fall in their supply chain revenues i mean for us in march the question was whether to pivot if to pivot where or to close the gates uh, temporarily to the company and, and we came up with the idea that, you know, we can create a COVID-19 antibody test to really help understand how big the disease spread is. And, and uh, we knew that we could do it for multiple antibodies or multiple disease stages because we've done that for technology. You already did it for a different illness. You're yeah. saying, why not use the same method we developed for other viruses yeah. or and, illnesses? And, and the documentation, which is the legal part, which is very important for us, was was pretty much the same thing compared to TechPlex, except the change in the microbe, the change in risks related to the product and, and stuff. So Leona basically did the documentation part and I was doing the lab part and we communicated from time to time to just get the thing going for, for three weeks continuous. So, I mean, we can do this for uh, any other disease, and in many ways, SARSFIX has been an eye-opening experience for the company itself because we have now realized that uh, just going on with TechPlex, while it is what the company stands for, cannot be the only solution. We have delayed our plans on testing for autoimmunity. So as soon as I'm able to defend my PhD thesis, we are going to start developing some biomarkers for autoimmunity and hopefully the end of the year will be with a bang. And what will that mean for the layman? Can you explain in layman's terms what it means to have autoimmunity? What would well, that mean? Well, autoimmunity is a condition wherein your own immune system starts to attack your body uh, or different parts of your body. And, and uh, a good uh, example of this is various types of arthritis diseases uh, uh, and so on. And so what happens is this disease the tested at our company, we will be looking at it from an infectious disease standpoint. So due to an infection, you have developed an autoimmune disease. So how do we detect that? What are the biomarkers do we look at and say that, you know, this is because of an infection. If it is an autoimmunity, how do we improve the patient outcome from there on? So uh, we, we've kind of specialized the infectious disease part, which is bacteria and viruses, which is tick plagues. Now we have to connect this to an autoimmune biomarker that says, you know, if you have this infection, there is a chance of this autoimmunity. Are you responding like an autoimmune patient would respond? If you are, then the treatment protocol will be more uh, personalized for the patient. The patient is not being treated for an infection rather than he or she is being treated for a condition uh, of the immune system. So but the immune the, system is attacking its own body. You're able yeah. to track that and hopefully prevent it. Well, well, prevent prevention is a very complicated thing. That really depends on uh, how the patient is responding. We can help detect it definitely, and hopefully detect it earlier than other tests in the market. But prevention really depends on the disease severity. It also depends on, you know, how long the history has been with this patient, a, a number of factors. So I think it's a little difficult to comment on that yet, but I do think we have to do better in the detection uh, system of how well we detect these patients and how we improve 
their their overall overall health outcome. And in the in the tick born illnesses, Lyme's disease is the most devastating. Is that accurate? It is the flagship disease. It it is it is our research shows that eighty five percent patients that do respond to Lyme disease are the ones that actually respond to other microbes than patients without a response to Borrelia. And and, and mm-hmm. yeah. And the audio, the immune system starts attacking itself once you have Lyme's disease. Well, Borrelia has been known as the great immune evader. Uh, it can suppress the immune system. Uh, it can evade the immune system. It can modulate the immune response, and it has it has been recorded as one of the bacteria that can really screw up the immune system, especially if it is not diagnosed in the early stages. So uh, yes, I mean Borrelia has been. Uh, associated with immune dysfunction, so definitely. That's the name of the bacteria. Borrelia, from, yeah, from Lyme disease. From Lyme disease, and yeah. how severe is this? Because you know, I grew up in South Jersey, yeah. and most people confuse North New Jersey with South New Jersey. Yeah. Compli- two completely different yeah. areas. Uh, right. Up for another uh, topic of discussion and debate, <laughs> but in South Jersey, it's a, a lot of woods. And you have to be careful of ticks. And so you'd go and you, after you get out of the woods, you have to have your friend check your scalp to make sure there's yeah. no ticks and you just pull them off. How severe of a condition are we talking? I mean, how many people are actually getting a, a tick a well, born in illness? I mean, if you look at the US alone, uh, the reported number of cases are anywhere around 40,000 to 50,000 but the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have stated that the cases are much, much more than that. It's around 400,000, 500,000 per year. Wow. And, and, and the reason for this is tick-borne diseases or Lyme disease for that matter has a very unique rash. It is known as the bullseye rash. So when you see that, you know that you, know you may have this, you go to a physician, the physician will give you a antibiotic treatment and and but what has been interesting in this case is not many patients or a good percentage of patients actually do not show a rash and patients that do not show a rash may not even remember being bitten by the tick so they are going in the stages of disease without by even being asymptomatic it. without knowing it and and then at the later st- stages like any disease the diagnosis gets very very complicated mm. there there is a social stigma also attached to this disease wherein a good set of guidelines say that a 28 days of antibiotic treatment is enough to get the patient uh, treated and back up and running but that has been a major debate in this area with many patients being unhappy with doctors and scientists being on the split of of whether the diagnostic uh, whether the treatment works or not and and so the whole idea of tickplex has been that you know yes there is lyme disease let's look for it let's uh, but we cannot forget the other microbes if these patients do go is uh, go into asymptomatic cases and into later stages uh, and they are suffering from multiple microbes and you treat them for just Borrelia or Lyme disease. Sure, Lyme disease may go away, but what about the other bacteria and viruses? Are we treating them for those? If not, how are those other? Uh, so you help the healthcare people? provider test for that. So, all right, let's say I just got back from a camping trip or I just went on vacation to an out- outdoorsy city like Denver or Utah or Montana and I come back and what, what should I be looking for? Let's say I do the tick check. I don't yeah. see anything. I mean, how do I know that I need your test? Well, the way it is seen right now is two different ways. One is the uh, existing market, so to say. There are a lot of patients with unmet medical needs. They have been ill for a very, very long time. You will find articles on the internet wherein patients have spent up to $60,000 to just get an appropriate treatment for Lyme disease. So there are patients that are highly, highly literate. They, they know they are up to date with research findings. They are up to date with what is happening in the professional personal communities. They've made communities on Facebook, Twitter. I mean, it is amazing to see patients taking charge uh, for their own health. 
so these patients talk about new tests and patients especially in europe they can order tests by themselves through labs on the other end we have uh, we go to conferences we go and meet key opinion leaders and then key opinion leaders talk about these tests so when these tests get uh, or when tickplex gets featured in conferences and in other labs doctors start taking pamphlets and then they start ordering and then they start seeing that you know okay this is giving me giving me a better diagnosis or maybe not so much i mean one of the main confusions that we've had is that a patient comes on a wheelchair and i i was in a conference in poland uh uh and a doctor over there comes to me very furious he says are you the developer of tickplex i said yes and then he is like you know my patient comes on a wheelchair uh, i he's been having a tickborne disease history for the past 10 years uh and and he's absolutely negative on tickplex what the hell and i'm like okay can you give me like more history on this patient has this patient been on on a long antibiotic treatment uh and and so and so and and at the end we came to a conclusion that since the patient has been on a long antibiotic treatment just because of that there is a good chance that the patient is immune compromised now an antibody test is only as good as the antibodies being produced in a patient sure. and, and and there's a good history to show scientifically that patients with antibiotic treatment do not produce uh antibody levels of antibodies that you would see in a positive patient and then he said oh well that makes sense and so there's there's also an education part around this sure. because for the healthcare have, providers not just the patients so not just the patients if you take too many antibiotics it could eventually it could prevent you from creating the level of antibodies you need to detect it in the first place yeah yeah i mean uh, and when people hear this they're like you, you should go to more natural resources which is phytochemicals which we say okay but these phytochemical producers i think at the moment at, at least for lyme disease need to do more clinical trials and we are actually helping a few uh, get there to do so patients trials. need to be educated too they need to let's say we come back from an outdoor camping trip where maybe we're feeling a symptom or we're not and yeah. maybe we we see the the bullseye rash which is the yeah. signature rash for Lyme's disease we go to the doctor we say hey we want you to do the tickplex antibody test not just yeah. the the normal traditional look for the rash and if i have it i have it if not because yeah. i i remember tim ferris the author of 4 hour work week he had lyme's disease yeah. right yeah and he he was se- severely ill as a result of it well there are many uh uh pop star culture stars and super celebrities that have been ill i mean the most recent example is avril lavigne she avril lavigne yeah yeah she she's been uh, i mean i can say this because this is public information usually we don't discuss patient information but it's, it's a, she's a public figure she's brought a lot of attention to the disease again and this is because of the patient community i think it's called the global lyme alliance they they've done an excellent job in creating awareness then there is limedisease.org these are us based uh, patient communities that give out in many ways credible information about how to look at new research what to be aware of mm. uh, and they've played a very important role in shaping general public knowledge uh, with doctors with scientists and where can they look that. where if someone in the audience is listening where could they look this up well lime disease.org is the best place to start okay. and my and you said there's facebook groups for communities that might be dealing with this but might not be a uh, valid information but it's a, at least a support group that you can talk with other people that may have been through this yeah i mean uh, so for example i can think of three different names right now lime disease.org uh, uh, global lime alliance and then there is bay area foundation Mm-hmm. or lyme disease bay area foundation and when um, you get it is there no cure i mean you're going to just have to live with it the rest of your life and just deal with the conditions for the later stage of lyme disease or tick-borne disease the the treatment protocols are not so standardized for the early part yes 28 days of antibiotic treatment like doxycycline uh, but for the later stages it is highly highly debated at the moment mm-hmm. uh, uh, hopefully we come up with a solution so that the patients do not have to suffer a lot 
but it really depends from patients to pay, uh, doctors to doctors and especially where the doctor is practicing if the doctor is practicing let's say in germany uh, there are a lot of doctors that are able to you know personalize the treatments but in the us maybe not so much mm-hmm. uh, so it is a highly regulated place where doctors have to you know be careful so do scientists uh, it, it's an area that is fiercely debated it is an area where there, there is a lot of misinformation but there is also a lot of ignorance so to say sure. uh, and i think it's a emerging disease wherein in the next 5 to 6 years we'll see more understanding and more people jumping into this area well that's great that you're doing this uh we, so doctors that are listening healthcare providers please get tickplex in your institutions so yeah. uh we could help more more and more people and it sounds like you've set up a lab to be able to do this not just for tick-borne illnesses but as you've recently mentioned covid so this is going to open you up for a platform of providing this service for a multitude of bacterium and viruses yeah so it seems like this is like the platform i mean when i think of entrepreneurship i think the best companies the longest lasting companies aren't the companies that just worked on one service or product yeah. they offered a platform for other people to build off of so instead of just for example creating your own business on squarespace's website well squarespace is the platform for which yeah. other entrepreneurs build their website you are essentially the lab that allows other scientists to come in and help build these these uh, tests for other conditions yeah i mean that has always been our goal we we are always open to good feedback good collaboration uh, and and we are actually getting into a new project right now uh, with multiple partners in europe hopefully the project goes through and that will help us customize the test even more add more microbes we've actually one of the limitations i have to say with our lab is a bio level safety tool lab we would have wanted to add a uh, bio level safety 3 bacteria also but we cannot do that because of the facility so hopefully the projects that will come in the future can help us find partners that can you know grow bacteria uh, uh for higher level of safeties and so that we can introduce them in the test that's awesome well you heard it first ladies and gentlemen if you know someone or are interested yourselves please reach out to kunal you've had to hustle your way from water purification to uh making your way into your phd program what's something scrappy you did to hustle that maybe you couldn't have revealed when you were first starting out but now that you're at a later stage you're funded that you could possibly reveal and share i mean uh we have to be careful in the way we be scrappy in this industry especially because we have a quality management system but one of the ways we hustled initially was by doing the manufacturing for techplex manually it was a pain and the reason we had to do that was because 95% of our brand new equipment failed uh, wow. and yeah i mean this was an issue that we were warned about by experts who have set up a bio level safety tool lab and we said you know if there's a problem going to happen then uh mofi's law is mofi's law you can't do anything about it yes. so so we we had 95% of our equipment fail either it was not delivered on time or if it was delivered on time there was a wrong plug or if there was if there was a correct plug it wouldn't work the way it was intended to by the manufacturer and this went on for 3 months and we had promised orders Uh, especially in germany so one of the things that our quality management system allowed us that time was manufacturing using an automated machine but quickly we you know changed our documentation changed our standard operating procedures to do manual manufacturing and for 3 months 3 months we were doing manual manufacturing and that i mean i hope we don't have to go there ever <laughs> one again by one, one individually by one. I I mean you see there's a 96 well plate you know it it's a plate of this size with 96 holes in it and you you just pipe it in one oh one one God. and you would have to do 100 plates a day so it, and it normally was, you have a machine to do that all at once yeah and the machine just, I mean it does that and then 
you're just sitting at the side sipping something not really but <laughs> most but people would give it up in that situation and you you kept moving forward it was difficult forward. it was difficult we had promised daughters we couldn't go back on that especially as a new company we had to show revenue uh, uh so we did whatever we could and then next year when we uh, got the automation up and running we were able to fulfill more orders so our revenues kind of increased by 150% so that what did was, you change about that like once you had a poor situation with obviously the supplier or whoever set up the lab 90% is not you know working yeah. what did you do differently the next time to prevent that from happening did you fire them as your supplier how did you navigate that i mean in this space the amount of or the equipments that we needed the amount of suppliers was basically a monopoly we had to order it from them or else no go especially the automation machine that we used was custom made for us it was not an off, off the shelf machine so we had to go with that uh, uh, manufacturer currently if i'm getting a new machine i would ask them to get the machine here install it over here give me 3 weeks so that i can test it and then if i like it i will keep it or they can take it away uh, so if there's one thing i could do if i go back would be to you know get all the equipments here on the basis that you know i will test it we will validate it for our own processes if we like it we will take it otherwise we that's don't. a good rule of thumb for those listening too if if you can work out a deal with your supplier where you get to test the equipment first like a small sample or yeah. subset of the population of equipment you need or food you need or whatever the product or service they're providing you is and then you decide to make a larger order. Yeah, I mean that that time. is very important. It it is, it is a little tricky when you have big machineries. So in that case I would just go to the manufacturing place of where this machine is being built and then just mm. do my tests over there because I mean setting up a bio level safety to lab or a clean room for that matter is a big headache. So if you're getting in an equipment cleaning up the space and then the machine does not work you have to get it out it is really a big hassle and we had to do that for a very big refrigerator that we bought and it just broke in the middle of the day and we had to you know just ship it out to the manufacturer three weeks i mean as a life science biotechnology lab if there's one thing you cannot be with is a refrigerator <laughs> we didn't have a refrigerator for three weeks so we just So do you have food. a backup refrigerator now just now, in case Now we have four backup refrigerators <laughs> four for that one for that one refrigerator Smart. so I mean redundancies you got to have redundancies Yeah I mean it was a big lesson the whole process of setting up the lab uh yeah <laughs> I would not you. do it again yeah. You overcame the challenge and now you have a plan and I like that too is listen if the supplier can't send a sample we'll go to you and we'll test it out at your location Yeah I mean if if the if an equipment costs 400000 you better spend 400 4000 euros to just go there stay there test it out and then mm -hmm. come back because it's going to save you a lot of time and headache who no thanks for sharing thanks for the advice yeah. let's transition now switch gears to something i like to call the under 30 seconds round Ooh. i'm going to fire off some questions i want you to answer with the first thing that comes to mind all right are you ready yeah okay what is the book you've gifted more often than any other book and why uh Wings of Fire by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam he, he was the 11th president of India why because i think it's a perfect example of a person being persistent and having the right scientific genius to kick off the the most successful uh, aerospace program in India wow fantastic and two what's one of the best and one of the worst investments you've ever made and why best investment was to change my mindset to do the practical training more than the theory and the worst has been let me think actually it has been a headphone that i bought but i don't want to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> all right we won't we won't mention that company's yeah, uh, yeah, brand yeah. here uh what's the most impactful thing you do in your morning routine and the most impactful thing you do in your evening routine the most impactful thing i do in the morning routine which i really need is 30 minutes of exercise mm -hmm. without that if i start the day it's probably going to be miserable uh and in the evening before i sleep i use this app called headspace 
not promoting the app in any way but i think it's it's an excellent app it helps me calm down because i do suffer from anxiety from time to time so it it is very important for me to have an okay to good sleep yeah headspace the meditation app yeah was created by andy pudicom the uh f- former burmese monk i think he has a great book too and he explains okay. it in his book about why his headspace meditation app is the way it is why he designed it that way it's very cool to see it from a logistical standpoint and in writing why he has you go through those different um steps in the meditation oh, wow. oh you should share the link i will I like i'll put it that. i'll put in the show notes too and yeah. all right number 4 pretend you won the peter teal fellowship and you were going to get money to start a business instead of go to college where would you start in starting that business is the first thing you would do i would still start in one of the nordic countries especially denmark if possible uh just because there there's a i don't know i've not been in anywhere else so to say but but in the nordics i've seen that there's a very open culture uh you can easily meet people that you want to and denmark especially because i've always been amazed at the novo nordisk foundation i think they they do an excellent job at promoting new companies new technologies and really impacting the the general public so yeah somewhere in the nordics all right there you the nordics are going to be happy about this <laughs> the scandinavian countries I, i think they're all on your side now yeah uh, what last question in the under 30 seconds round what's something you never knew you needed uh crocs crocs the shoes <laughs> yeah why because i i mean where when we worked in labs in india we would just get uh slippers and we would wear socks on it so that our foot was covered now when i came here there was this whole culture of crocs 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 and i was like okay what is crocs because i was really introduced to crocs when i came to finland so it's this amazing in finland thing. it's very popular it is popular apparently and 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 uh, it's a slide in slide out very easy slip and you can use them thing. in the lab and we can use them in the lab and i was like okay i didn't know we could do that so that was the amazing <laughs> thing i was like okay there you cool. go get some crocs ladies <laughs> yeah. and gentlemen well kunal thank you so much for being here today before you go what's the next big goal or milestone or bucket list item you want to achieve oh bucket list i i think the major thing for me overall has been to be known in the area of technology transfer so my my biggest goal would be at the end to you know have the knowledge to get a research idea into a product and service and be known for it mm. that you know if there's a person who can do it it's me so so i would like to build that kind of reputation but also in 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 doing that push tested in a place wherein we are actually the global leaders in infectious diseases and infectious disease induced autoimmunity testing that's an ambitious goal i look yeah. forward to witnessing that thank you and where do listeners go to connect with you directly kunal uh i'm most active on linkedin linkedin uh yeah and and uh, yeah that's that's the best place to catch me Uh, message me please feel free to do that i mean always please. look yeah always looking forward to hearing from new people perfect great please go connect with kunal ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for being here today we learned about tick borne illnesses we learned about a new test for covid amazing laboratory experience and we also learned how you can manage your supply chain when things don't always go your way and crocs apparently are the new things <laughs> and they are the new thing they are the new thing seriously i hope this episode helped you as much as it helped me have an amazing day and thank you kunal thank you for having me my pleasure
Thanks for joining us today. I hope this episode helped you as much as it helped me. Who do you think would benefit from hearing it? You can make an impact on their life by sharing it now. Before you go, I encourage you to tell us your favorite part of the episode in the review section. Now it's time to level up. Level up.